expect nothing and be surprised by the unexpected because when you're out in nature, you never know which animal will just fly by or appear in front of you. And that's what I find so exciting about wildlife photography, you never know. I guess the first thing that made me realise that I'm really into wildlife photography is when back in the days when I just started out to work, I realised that I'm always um, taking photos of animals, be it a cattle or a bee when I'm travelling overseas in places like New Zealand or Japan. And as you know, New Zealand there's lots of beautiful landscape and architecture but somehow my instinct is to always to capture the animals in their environment. So I guess that's the first kind of indication of my interest in wildlife photography. Sometimes I have waited for a whole day with nothing much to photograph because it could be too hot so the animals don't want to come out or it could be certain weather changes that cause the animals to probably change their behaviour slightly. Just to click that button, it sounds so easy but it's actually a lot of work and experience especially because with wildlife photography, the moment is just split second. A mother taking care of a baby or it could be birds taking flight with their beautiful feathers and being able to capture these amazing, beautiful moments and allowing others to appreciate the beauty of Mother Nature, I think that's my main uh, calling as a wildlife photographer. So that's what I like to do in the world, to observe and then bring those observations to my audience. There was this one time I was in Borneo, we saw a very rare species of hornbill, so rare that my guide who lived there for like 20 years only seen it once or twice. So when we saw the hornbill, I was like, I saw it and then I'm like, my, I'm like, a few seconds passed and then I was like, turn the boat, turn the boat and uh, I only managed like two shots, one shot of it and the other shot with, of the tree. <laughs> they flew off. <laughs> I guess the sense of smell is actually sometimes even more memorable than your sense of hearing or eyesight. When I was back in Borneo many many years ago, I was with my guide and he pinpointed like certain smells to me like this is the proboscis monkey urine smell and this is the elephant smell that kind of started to use my sense of smell to recognise different animals and from there I can easily track them in the forest. It's quite fun, you are in this big playground with all this vision and sensory overload and then trying to pinpoint like which one is the one that you want to focus on. favourite subjects to photograph are primates because I think they are so alive when they play with each other, uh, climbing around the trees. So this image actually went on to win a grand prize in Wyndham Smith uh, International Photography Award and I was invited to the US to receive the award in Smithsonian Natural History Museum where the photo was displayed. As I was taking this picture, I was kind of wondering why would the monkey actually flip upside down to drink water out in the middle of the river. Then I realised that it's probably because there's crocodiles in the river, probably to um, wait for their prey. So that really uh, trained the monkey to, instead of drinking water from the banks, to actually climb out towards the river to drink and upside down. I think that was really interesting. I went to Kalimantan to document the orangutan orphans. They are basically uh, orphaned because their mothers were killed because of uh, illegal wildlife trade and also destruction of the forest. The baby orangutans, they are very much like human kids. They drink milk, they sometimes wake up at night crying and then sometimes when they see you, they want to hold your hand. 
and if you go and play with another of his buddy, this one might get jealous. And so I went there to document the whole story and did a photo exhibition on Mother's Day. When you hear about all the forest fire and the smoke that affected us in Singapore, sometimes we don't think about the animals there that are suffering, but we only think about our own suffering, which is, oh, we have to wear masks, we have to breathe unhealthy air. But for them, it's even worse, and they are like mothers and babies dying. So, you know, in a way, educate uh, Singaporeans to think in a different way, to make them more aware of what's happening when uh, certain things uh, happen here, like the haze in Singapore. In wildlife photography, sometimes you may wait a few days, but yet you don't get a single good picture. So in terms of like time and money, you really have to balance it out, which is quite challenging. Probably about two, three years ago, I started pet photography, also related to animals, because I just love working with animals. Help stable the income, and I guess that's also another way of me being able, able to express myself through photography, because when you photograph pets, it's also about the interaction between the pet and the pet owner, you know, the bond that they have. So I love to capture that. I think I wear a lot of different hats from day to day, be it uh, being in the wild in my khakis uh, outfit or being in studio with my clients, dressing kind of professional. I think it's quite fun. Uh, in fact, I feel like I have kind of a different personality whenever I'm in different outfits. So when I'm in a wall with my big cameras and my khaki clothing, I feel kind of strong and powerful and my camera is like my shield. So far, I've always been more focused on the wildlife and nature in Asia Pacific. So definitely in the future, I would love to go to Africa, Antarctica, etc. In fact, this year, I'll be going to Africa for the first time, so I'm really excited about that. It's really nice to uh, be happy in what you do and always work towards what your heart loves to do, your passion. Because I think when you work hard in your passion, that is the best thing that you can do for yourself.